good morning welcome to my lecture today i will talk about an essay on dramatic poesy by john dryden this particular part is from pg second semester seventh paper cc7 and this is from the unit 3 okay so before i uh, go into dryden's text let me talk a little about the restoration period and about john dryden himself john dryden was a restoration english poet he was a literary critic he was a translator he was a playwright and uh, the restoration period which started from 1660 was come into existence after the restoration of monarchy after the puritan age during puritan age there were several um, there there are several disturbances about social norms there were the closing of theaters there were other uh, dominating forces which was ruling the society and after the uh, after the uh, restoration of monarchy when oliver and richard cromwell's rule ended in england uh, there was a time when charles the second was restored to the throne during that time many new genre prospered for example there was the form of essays form of satires all these thing prospered in the literary arena and dryden john dryden he was one of the most prominent figures during that time okay so he has written several um, restoration tragedies like the conquest of granada Aurangzeb all, all, all for love has he has written several other poems like religio medici sorry religio lyci mac flecno the satire then there is hind and the panther absalom and achitophel and all but perhaps one of his most important contributions is the essay on dramatic poesy which i am going to discuss it today those who want for some short notes or key notes those will be available in the description box of this lecture okay so this particular essay is uh, written in 1668 in a form of a semi drama why i am calling it a semi drama because of that though there is not that kind of dramatic content we have certain discussions among four friends who were uh enjoying a leisurely time uh on the river thames during the war between england and netherlands and many many critics consider it i mean the work of dryden an essay on dramatic poesy as a kind of continuation of the work by philip sidney defense of poesy which was written in 1580 so there are chiefly four characters in this particular play not uh, not play but uh, is this essay and those are critus eugenius lycidius and neander critus represents the ancients and the classical writers eugenius represents the modern writers lycidius represents the french drama and neander who was dryden himself represents british drama and defends shakespeare and other elevation playwrights and their conversations and arguments during that boat ride has been uh, taken together in the form of this particular essay so uh, there are chiefly three parts in this essay in the first part which describes the arguments between critus and eugenius who represents ancients and modern respectively now we have to understand that modern means not the modern age which we perceive modern in the context of restoration england so eugenius was trying to defend that and the second part of this essay describes the arguments between lycidius and neander who represents who represents french drama and the british drama especially the elizabethan drama respectively and in the third part of this essay we have uh, the elaborate use of rhyme and blank verse in the drama and neander and uh, lycidius they argues which 
Critus and Neander they argue they argue which part should be used in the um, verse form. So, uh, what Critus told in his argument, he was actually defending the ancient writers, and what he pointed out that ancient writers like Aristotle, um, like Aristophanes, like uh, Sophocles, like Euripides, they uh, they made the rule of writing they show the world how to how to write a play or a tragedy maybe or a comedy maybe and aristotle's concept of mimesis shows that drama is an imitation of life okay what it uh, what it is what it should be and what it ought to be okay so they have shown the world how to uh, write a drama here so they have they have provided provided an extensive model of their drama form and according to Critus' argument sophocles or euripides are much more better than their modern counterparts okay and he has pinpointed ben johnson and he thinks that ben johnson is one of the modern writers who has followed the classical extensively and he has in his argument also talks that classicals are much more skillful in language compared to their moderns. Now, at this point, there was an argument on part of Eugenius who was supporting the moderns. He talks about that moderns have modified the rule played by the classical writers. So, in that way, moderns are better than the classical writers. He also extensively uh, criticized uh, the classical writings he points out that classical dramas lack originality and all the tragedies are based on old worn out myths and comedies cannot evoke enough fun and laughter so he criticized the classical writings according to him there is no poetic justice what is poetic justice poetic justice is the justice on part of the poet towards the end of the plot where the protagonist suffers should not suffer or suffer whatever may it be so in his argument eugenius pointed out that there is no poetic justice and protagonist suffers in the tragedies and he also criticizes the divine oracles which uh, which makes the plot very monotonous for example in Sophocles Oedipus Rex, there was a divine oracle that Oedipus will kill his father and marries his mother. And it was foretold at the very beginning of the play. Okay. And ultimately what happens that, uh, that oracle was justified towards the end. So this kind of form has been criticized by Eugenius in his particular argument now we come to the second part where there is an uh, conversation between Lysidius and Neander Lysidius was of course supposed the French playwrights like Pierre Cornell and the others and he he was thankful to those French writers who has followed the three unities of time place and action on part of the classical and he also pointed out that uh, the French writers never mix the form of tragedy and comedy. They had a separate understanding of tragedy and comedy and they borrowed from the history to uh, look truth and fiction uh, side by side. So that, um, that another understanding which comes out from the Lysidius arguments is that the French playwrights prefers emotions over plot so violent action always takes place off stage that that is an example uh, there should be there should not be any kind of violent action which should uh, be during the play it should be happen off stage okay so that is, uh, in his reply there is the arguments of neander who was actually supporting the elevated drama elevated dramatist and also the british playwrights instead of the french playwrights 
he contradicts Lysidius and talks about the greatness of Eleven writers like Shakespeare. He points out, points out that French drama lacks souls. Instead, he defends the tragic comedy as the best form of drama as both sadness and joy remain side by side in the um, tragic comedy. And he supports subplots. As he pointed out that in a single plot or a monoplot drama, uh, it remains monotonous. If there are certain subplots, such as in Shakespeare's uh, greatest tragedies, there are several subplots. Okay, so he points out that if there is some subplots, it uh, eases of the monotonous nature of the play. And he also defends Shakespeare for using the three unities. Earlier, Critus pointed out that uh, the three unities should, should be maintained. He points out that Shakespeare has not used the three unities, the unity of time, unity of place and unity of actions. He pointed out that this, uh, without this, it enhances the dramatic credibility of the plays. And Neander also points out that Shakespeare is the best among modern and ancients. In this argument, he mentions several other names like Francis Beaumont and John Fletcher for their wit and smoothness of character, Ben Johnson for his correctness, and at the end, he concludes that Eliabethans are much more superior in their variety, in, his, in their deviations, and in their wits. In the third part of this essay, there is an argument in which form a drama should be written. Should it be written in blank verse or should it be written in uh, rhyme form? Critus argued that blank verse is the best form of drama and all the drama should have been written from that perspective. While Neander defends that rhyme is essential for any kind of drama as used by Shakespeare because it uh, provides the brevity and the clarity. And Dryden believes in the form, in the argument of Neander that uh, drama is the legitimate form of a poetry. And this is the form, this is the discussion which happened during the journey and the, uh, the essay abruptly, abruptly comes to an end when they all these four people reaches their destination, um, destination and there was no specific conclusion on part of the four uh, person. So there is no specific conclusion in this particular uh, essay but all the arguments in favor of ancients, in favor of moderns, in favor of French dramas and in favor of uh, Elizabethan and British playwrights has been pointed out by the four characters. Thank you.